content. We're going to think our opening selection. We're going to do things different because I like being different because I don't like to stay in the same old rut. Satan knows your every move. And so we're going to switch things up and we're going we're gonna to sing something different. If it's not an um, opening selection, it is tonight. So, <laughs> so, so we have all of y'all to help us. And then the praise team, they can, they can help. But I'm, I'm really counting on y'all. Okay, so <laughs> it's a highway to heaven, none can walk up there, but the pure in heart to heaven, walking up the Say it again, say it again. It's a highway. Listen, listen. I think it said, if you're not walking, start while you're talking. Walking in the Yeah, I said I'm gonna be different. I wrote this verse. He said, You need a blessing. Won't you keep on pressing? Walking in the highway. Oh, it's a But, but, one more time. It's a high way to It's a highway to heaven. Praise the Lord. Would you turn me with, with me to Philippians, the fourth chapter, and we'll start at the fourth verse on uh, five and six. Philippians 4, verses 4 through 6. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. May the Lord have blessed you. Lord, let's bless you. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come thank you, Lord, for just, just bringing us here safely thank this evening, Lord. Father God. We just want to thank you, Lord, for your protection over us all day, Father God. We pray that you continue to cover us with your protection. Because we need you, Father God. We need you to cover us for the vi from the viruses, Father God, from Satan that's all around us, Father God. We just need you, Lord. We come here this evening, Father God. We pray that your anointing is already here. Just let it just fall fresh in your place of worship tonight, Lord. We just give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise, Father. We pray, Father God, for our revival. We pray that, you rev that our hearts be revived, Father God. Our souls be renewed, Lord. Our, our joy be restored, Father. We just thank you, Lord. Thank you for the word that's been preached this week, Father God. We just we just give you the highest praises this evening, Father. Glory, hallelujah, Father. We said we give you the highest praises this evening. Glory, hallelujah, Lord. We just thank you for everything, Father God. We pray that you just be with us tonight and that at the revival, let us still be revived next week, Father God, in the weeks to come, Lord. Don't let it just stop tonight, Father. And we just give you the praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen.
Please be seated. God is so good. Amen. Amen. Um, just before we get started, and we're going to try to do a melody of songs. And I think pretty much everybody knows these songs. So please join it in because it was sounding real good when we did Highway to Heaven. So all these songs are not hard. And we, you know, we welcome your participation. But what I want to say is, please, 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 you know, everybody does their own thing. But I find that a lot of people just don't know. So I'll let you know, because I know. We all know COVID is out, still out there. Well, there are surrounding churches in here that have had to cancel. And I just heard this today. Um, so that revivals and stuff like that, because there has been an outbreak. And it's actually more than actually what I thought. So just ask you, just be safe wherever you go. You do you. But I'm just saying, awareness, you know, I want to make y'all aware. So, you know, if nobody tells you nothing, then you don't know. So, you know, I would want someone to tell me. But so we're going we're gonna to go because I know the preacher is coming with a good word. I told him I better not come back tonight after he called me a fool last night. But I came on back, and, you know, but tonight's the last strike for him, okay? <laughs> amen, amen. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we, this is an old song, is, and, and it goes something like this. I love the Lord, and I won't take it back. I love the Lord, and I won't take it back. I love the Lord, and I won't take it back. He has been so good to me. that again. I love the Lord, and I won't take it back. I love the Lord, and I won't take it back. I love the Lord. And I won't take it back. He has been so good to me. How good? So good. So good. So good. He has been so good to me. So good. So good. So good. So good. So good. He has been so good. Now, let's go. This little light. Well, this the light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. It's the light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. It's the light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. 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 Let's say that again. Well, it's the light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. It's the light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. It's the light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Reverend Bright. Oh, let my home, Lord. I'm going to let it shine. Oh, let my home, Lord. I'm going to let it shine. And all in my home, Lord. I'm going to let it shine. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Deacon and Satan. All in my church, Lord. I'm going to let it shine. All in my church, Lord. I'm going to let it shine. All in my church, Lord. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. We're on the battlefield. Well, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Said I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. And not from the him that I, I will serve him till I die. Said I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Say it again. Say it again. Said I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. On the battlefield, oh my Lord, promise you that I'm serving till I die. I'm on the battlefield, 
Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. This Sunday, my turn Glory, glory. Hallelujah. This Sunday, my turn down. My friends don't treat me like they used to. Since I lay my burden down, friends don't treat me like they used to. Since I lay my burden down, I'm going home to live with Jesus. Since I lay my burden down, I'm going home to. Here with Jesus, yes, I live. I'm burning down, burning down, burning down, Lord. Yes, I live. My burning down will burn down, Lord. Burning down, Lord. Yes, I live. Let's get a band song. Now we're gonna close out with this little light. Well, it's the light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. It's the light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. It's the light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. One last. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Thank y'all. I was listening this week to the service on Line Tuesday and then last night. And every night I said, somebody taking this little light of mine. But I'm going to sing it anyway, Dad. I couldn't think of nothing else. That was my song. I have to think of something else, but I, I ain't overkill, but that's all right. They don't know next year, I'll just put myself first. Bless your heart. Thank you. <laughs> the worship leader should now come. Good evening. Let us pray. O oh, gracious and heavenly Father, we come to you again, Lord, thanking you for this day. Ask, Lord, that you allow the Holy Spirit to continue to be in this place. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Good evening again, and welcome to our last night of revival for 2023. Thank God for bringing us through another revival. Good evening to those on Zoom video as well as on the Zoom prayer line. We will have our opening song by the praise group, followed by prayer and script, scripture and prayer, the introduction of the speaker by Sister Minor, two selections by the praise team, and then the preached word by Pastor Dr. Larry Brown. Please stand for the opening selections and remain standing for the reading of God's word. Thank you. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King 
rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Somebody sing, oh, let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord rise. Let the praises of our King rise. Let it rise. Somebody open your mouth and say, Oh, let it rise. One more time, say, oh, let it rise. Let the joy of the Lord rise. Let the joy of the Lord rise. Let the joy of the Lord Let the praises of our King rise. Let it rise. Come on, everybody, say, oh, 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 let the song of the Lord, let the song of the Lord rise, let the song of the Lord Rise, let the praises of our King rise. Come on, open your mouth and say, Oh, let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord rise. Come on, clap your hands. Let the glory of the Lord rise. Let us pray. Father God, it's once again that we come unto you, Lord. Thank you, Father God, for your grace and your wisdom. Thank you, Father God, for allowing us to see this day. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we are so thankful that you allowed us to assemble ourselves in this building one more time. 
one more revival, God, that has come and soon will be no more. Father God, a lot has happened since August of last year. But for some reason, Lord, you kept it. A lot of people have gone on to glory, Lord. But for some reason, Lord God, you allowed our moments to roll on just a little while longer. And for that, we say thank you, Lord. Lord, you know that we're looking for a pastor. But, Father God, I do know that you already have selected the person. We just got to go through the process. We ask, Father God, that you give us a discerning spirit. Because, Lord God, you know that the devil can come in all kinds of paths. Father God, he can tickle the ear, the tongue. But, Lord God, we want somebody who proclaimed the name of Jesus, who's been brought by the Spirit. Somebody, Lord God, who accepted you as their Savior and who is willing to preach the word whether we like it or not. Preach it in season and out of season. We thank you, Father God, once again for sending us Reverend Owen. He has really poured out his soul this week, and I know we'll get the same tonight. We thank you, Father God, for those who have been sick, but you allowed them to come back to the house of Zion one more time. Bless those, Father God, who are still sick on their beds of affliction, Lord God. Not only them, but their caretakers, Father God, because it's not an easy job. Lord God, we ask that you bless those who are in bereavement, Lord, bless their hearts and let them know that you know all that they're going through, Father God, and let them know that earth has no sorrows and heaven cannot be. We thank you, Lord, and we ask that you bless this offering, Lord. May it be used for the uplifting of your kingdom. It is in the precious name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Again, we say good evening to everyone assembled. Good evening to those in the room. Good evening to all the ministers in the house. We say good evening to you as well. We have a few announcements to make. A few announcements to make. Okay, thank you. Uh, number one, uh, on Saturday, there'll be the African American Heritage Festival at Moss Knuckles from 10 until 4. Please go out and support the NAACP in their efforts to present African-American culture to our people. We um, also want to announce that, as you know, COVID has returned. It never left, but it took a holiday maybe. But it's back. 
Uh, and to that end, we're encouraging you to continue to wear your masks, get your vaccines if you have not done so, do your social distancing, wash your hands, and we would like to announce that Zion Travelers has canceled their homecoming and revival services for this Sunday. Um, there will be no homecoming and revival service at Zion Travelers Church. Okay, so be, on, be careful and take that into consideration. We also want to um, let you know that the bereaved family of Sister Gloria Turner, which a lot of you know, she lost her husband, Brother Walter Turner, Minister Walter Turner, who will be funeralized on Saturday at 11 o'clock at First Union Baptist Church. So have sympathy to the Turner family on that. Now, the introduction, the reintroduction of our illustrious revivalist for the week, none other than Reverend Dr. Larry Owens, Jr., one tidbit we hadn't told you, you know that he is a funeral director. He owns his funeral, several funeral homes. And when he received his license in 1996 or 98, 96, he was the youngest funeral director in the state of Virginia. So that is wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And he's been pouring out his heart to us. Uh, he told us on Tuesday to tend to your own business. And he told us on last night that the Lord looks out for babies and fools. So um, tonight, I don't know. Put your, put your heart into it. Put your mind into it. And listen to what he has to say. Partake of it. Use it in your daily walk with, with Christ. County Line Pastor, Reverend Dr. Larry Owens, Jr. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice. To worship you, oh my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear, and let it be a sweet, sweet sound. In your ear, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice. And I give my soul to worship you. Oh, my soul. Take joy. Oh, my in what and let it be a sweet I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice. To worship you, oh my soul, take joy in my king. In what you need, let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your feet. Listen. We exalt thee, we exalt thee, oh, we exalt thee, oh Lord, help me sing, we exalt thee, we exalt thee, we 
Splendor of our King is close in majesty. Let all the earth rejoice. Let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in life and don't be shy to hide a tremble at his voice. A tremble at his voice. How ready is our God? His feet are ready. In the Holy Spirit, how ready is our God? Let me do it. The splendor of our feet is close in the majesty. Let all the earth rejoice. Let all the earth rejoice. Then he wraps himself in the light. And his tongue tries to hide a triple and his voice. A tremble at his voice, but how pretty is that? Is that? Oh, is that pretty? How pretty is that? So the name of our holy name. Well, 
Praise team, another hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. We thank God for them on tonight for they got it right. Amen. Now, the reason I say that they got it right is because the Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Sometimes choirs, they mess it up. Uh, they just make noise. Amen. Uh, but this particular praise group made a joyful noise on tonight. And so I believe it's only right that we celebrate God for them. Come on, let's celebrate God for them. On tonight, amen. I was trying to act dignified and act like I had some sense, but they was about to make me lose my mind over in the corner. Amen. And so we do thank God for them on tonight. Let me pause to greet you in the name of the God that is our creator, in the name of the Christ that is our Savior, in the name of the Holy Spirit that is our comforter. Let me ask you a question on this third night. I know I've been redundant, but it's just so good to ask. Has the Lord been good to you today? Amen. Amen. Signs and wonders the master still performs. Do thank God for the opportunity to be back at the County Line Church again. And um, as we have already stated, we know that um, us gathering together tonight, and gathering as a collective body of believers, it is a blessing in itself. Uh, when so many churches are uh, closing down, uh, we're thankful that God has allowed us to get in. Right, right under the cuffs, amen, uh, to be able to have service on tonight, amen. I um, was, uh, uh, last night, I was telling myself, uh, when I got home, uh, my wife said to me, she said, you know, um, um, something ain't right. I said, why you say? She said, you know, you, you've been cutting the corner, country, cutting the corner, uh, kind of early these uh, last couple nights. I said, yeah, I, I have, I, you know, come on back home. And she said, but that's not like you. Normally, you like to stay and talk. I said, really? <laughs> and so, uh, you know, I went on and I explained. I said, well, you know, just things starting to happen. You know, we didn't stick around. So let me just say this because she informed me I need this. <laughs> you know, I need to make sure that you know I was not trying to be antisocial. 
I was not trying to be elitist. Uh, I just ain't want to take nothing home. Amen. <laughs> and, and, and so I, I preached and I hit the back door. Amen. And so for anyone who say, you know, he ain't even speak to us. Ah. <laughs> Amen. Let's get that out the way. Amen. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that all understand. Amen. All that is true. Uh, we do also want to uh, thank God for the leadership of this church. Uh, as it has been stated uh, earlier uh, the week and also tonight, uh, we know that the leaders of this church are engaging in a calling confession uh, to navigate the county line church until uh, God sees fit to place another pastor here. Amen. And uh, we just pray uh, that as you go through uh, what you have to go through, know that if you just depend on God, amen, and if you just stay prayerful, and stay together. That, that's important, too, uh, because sometimes when a pastor's not in place, folks say, oh, this is my time to get my agenda over. Amen. I've been in church a little while. I know. Amen. And I, I, don't, I don't pastor uh, ca- county line, but I pastor your cousins in D.C. Amen. <laughs> and so I know how we can act sometimes. And so uh, I am asking and I'm praying that you would just seek first the kingdom of God. And all other things shall be added unto you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, we do want to just thank everyone. I know on Monday night I, I kind of insulted some people and told folks to mind your business. And uh, on last night, uh, as Deacon said, I heard him in the back. He didn't even know I was listening. He said, he said, they got one more chance. Amen. He said, keep on talking. But, and see, all I'm going to say is this. I never called his name. But I'm going to tell you how my grandfather used to say, if you throw a brick in a pack of dogs, whichever one holler, that's the one that's guilty. And so he just said in front of everybody, <laughs> I, I never called your name. Amen. But guilt is a terrible thing. Amen. Guilt is a terrible thing. Uh, you know, uh, also, too, he was over there, and he just was uh, peacock proud. Uh, this praise uh, <laughs> praise team was doing such a marvelous job, the musicians and uh, singing. Uh, they were doing a marvelous job tonight. And uh, he, uh, he he had to inform me that uh, that uh, his uh, his wife on the corner. Yeah, he, he it's, you know, he's right, right proud of that. He's, uh, that, that that's mine over there. Yeah. Say, all right, man, I got you. I got one of them too. Amen. <laughs> Say, he, he just, just wanted it to be known that it was his wife. Well, you train them to know how to act when they come out. Let me just put it that way. Amen. Amen. Look, uh, tonight, I'm not going to insult you tonight. <laughs> I'm not going to insult you tonight. I'm going to uh, do my level best to uh, uh, give you an encouraging word. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, and I'll get into it. Uh, I know that tonight uh, the sermon might not be for everybody, but I'll try my best to explain it. Okay? Amen. Uh, let, let's just jump right into the word of the Lord right here. If you would go with me to the Old Testament book of 2 Kings, 2 Kings, 2 Kings, the Old Testament book of 2 Kings. I like to say that 2 Kings is easy to find because it's right behind 1 Kings. 2 Kings. Once you have gotten to 2 Kings, I'm going to ask that you would jump and sojourn and Cross your pen at verse, excuse me, at chapter number four. And we'll be reading verses one through seven on tonight. Second Kings chapter four, verses one through seven. Uh, As it is uh, the custom of this house that once you have found it, let us respect the tradition and the teaching here. Uh, If you can rise to your feet for the reading of God's word. And then also on tonight, I'm going to ask, as I've asked each and every chance I've been here to preach, is if you would keep your Bibles open even during the course of the preaching. Uh, It is our desire to exegetically expurgate the scriptures as well. And I believe that if we keep our Bibles open, we can see for ourselves. Second Kings, the fourth chapter, verses one through seven. Blessing on the reading of God's word on tonight. 
The word of the Lord says this. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditors is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondsmen. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, thine handmaiden hath not anything in the house except a pot of oil. Then he said, go borrow a few vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels. Borrow not a few. And when thou, come, when thou art come into the house, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and thou shalt pour out into those vessels. And thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him, and she shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels, and she poured out. And it came to pass that when the vessels were full, full, that she said unto her son, Bring me yet another vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel in the house. And they poured out. Then she came and she told the man of God and said, go sell the oil and pay your debt and live thou and thy children off the rent. Tonight, if we can, we want to tag the text with this title, trying to make the ends meet. Trying to make the ends meet. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you for another day's journey. We thank you for your grace and for your mercy, Lord. We thank you for your tender love. Lord, we thank you that you have been God from the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun. Lord, as we come today, we recognize how good you truly are. Lord, this morning about 557, you told the sun to shine, and it shined. This afternoon, this evening, about 802, you'll tell the sun to set, and it'll do so. Even in the middle of the day, when the temperature was high, you told the wind to blow, and it did so. And inasmuch as these seem like small things to those who don't know you, they serve as great reminders to us who love you. They're reminders because no man can tell the sun to shine. No man can cause the wind to blow. No man can set the temperature outside. So they're reminded that there must be. God, there has to be a God somewhere. But now, Lord, we need you to give just a little attention to the county line family. There's a word that needs to go forward. So, Lord, as I go through the moments and the process of the inspection and introspection, I ask you to give me what is needed right now. Make the word of God plain that your people can see it. Make it plain that your people can hear it. But most importantly, make it plain that we can live it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Trying to make the ends meet. For those of you, I'll be honest with you, as we start tonight, as I shared with you, I understand and know that this sermon is not for everybody. I understand and know. I want to try to encourage someone tonight, but I know that this is not for everyone in the room. The reason I know that this, this is not for everyone that's in the room is because I'm pretty sure in the room here, we have some millionaires, some multimillionaires, and there might be a billionaire or two even in the room. And so this message is not for you, but for those of us who know the struggles and strains of trying to make the ends meet, those of us who know what it is to have financial hills that are hard to climb sometimes. For those of us who know what it is to be able to say, uh, my money is funny, 
My change is strength. My pennies ain't many. My nickels are fickle. And my credit just won't get it. I, I don't know about you, but uh, I, I know that some of us in this room have been in situations in which they've had to try to make the ends meet in which they have looked at their money and they've looked at the month and the month is still going, but the money has run out. Have you ever been there before in which you had to put your checkbook on the table and you had to make a decision? Do I pay the lights or do I put a little food in the cabinet? I don't know how it works where you live, but I'll be the first to tell anybody that I believe my bills, uh, they have something special set up. The reason I say that is because when I put the check in the mail to pay a bill on Monday, Tuesday, they done wrote me again <laughs> and told me that I owe them next month. I, I don't know if it works like that for you, but you know, it, it, it's funny. I don't know if you've ever been there, but some of us know what it is to have to try to make the ends meet every now and again. I'll also go on to share with you uh, tonight, uh, Deacon, since you are here and you, you're with your wife, don't I don't want you to agree with me, uh, but I'm going to tell you a little something about my wife. She's not here tonight. Uh, sometimes that wife and that daughter of mine believe that I have this magic tree out back. And out back, uh, there's money that grows on that tree. I, 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 you better be quiet. You won't go home. I tried to boost him up, and he didn't talk to him about to get himself in trouble. And so on tonight, uh, we all know that most of us at some time or another have been in a financial strain. But let me share something with you. If you are young and you have never been in a financial strain, keep on living. Keep on allowing the sun to get up and the sun to lay down. Uh, it, it, do y'all remember there was a time uh, that when grandma would get that sack of potatoes, uh, she would peel the potatoes and the child would get ready to go throw that old sackcloth bag away? And grandma would say, no, don't you throw that good material away. We can make something with that. It might itch you to death, but we can cover yourself with it. Amen. But tonight what we want to do is we want to encourage you because, uh, yes, we know that God is the God of faith. And, yes, we know that God is the God that is able to provide. But tonight I want to show you and give you a strategy of what to do when you find yourself in tight times and understand that God will provide. Uh, tonight, I want to tell you this powerful uh, pericope, this powerful passage of scripture. Uh, it is a woman who has lost her husband. Her husband is a preacher, and uh, now her husband is dead. And to make matters worse, she must not have had any life insurance. She must not have had any type of retirement that she could tap into because now we see that her resources have been depleted and the bill collectors are knocking at her door. Not only are the bill collectors knocking at her door, they said, look, we we'll want payment for that which you owe us for. But now not only do we want payment, but what we are willing to do is we are willing to take your two sons as payment for the debts in which you owe. She finds herself in a financial quandary, and she goes uh, to the man of God, her pastor's pastor, and she says, Pastor, let me share with you. You know that my husband did love the Lord, and now he is dead, and the bill collectors are ringing my phone. In as much as uh, she goes on and she shares uh, with her pastor's pastor, with her husband's pastor, her financial situation, he gives her some strategy. He says, look, tell me, sister, what do you have in your house? After she goes on and she allows him to know that there's not much she has in her house. Her resources have been depleted. She's gone through some tough financial times. He says, well, go back home and look and see if you got any empty jars around the house. 
after she asked him. And she says, what am I supposed to do with these jars? He said, look, just go and get the jars and gather up as many jars as you possibly can. After you gather up the jars in your house, I want you to go and knock on your neighbor's door and ask them, do they have any jars as well? After you have gotten as many jars as you can, I want you to take the jars back to the house, get your sons, shut the door. Y'all have a prayer meeting over the jars. And as you know, the text unfolds. It says that she took the jars and oil started to fill the jars. Uh, After the oil started to fill the jars, she comes back uh, from having that prayer meeting with her family. And she says to her son, she says, boy, go get me some more jars. The boy said, Mama, there ain't no more jars to fill. And after she fills the jars that she has, she takes the jars to her pastor, to her husband's pastor. And her husband's pastor says, go and sell the oil, pay your debts, and live off the rest. And I'm going to be honest with you, that's a great biblical account in itself. I could really close the doors and leave and go on home. But since we're here tonight on this last night, let me just give you some biblical principles that will help you if you ever have a financial struggle. Now, y'all are kind of quiet tonight. Am I boring you? Have you ever had a financial trouble? Yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure I'm in the right place at the right time. The first thing I want you to see is right there in the first verse when it says, and now there cried a certain woman. Let me pause right there for a moment put pop my and pause my pen and parenthetically give you something here. You have to understand that when they tell this biblical account, uh, they don't give this woman's name. They don't tell us that her name is Sue. They don't tell us her name is Kim. They don't tell us her name is Anne. They just said a certain woman. And the reason why that's important is because as we look at the text, there is anonymity in the text. But the reason why God allowed anonymity to be in the text and did not put a name on this particular woman is because he wants you to know you can plug your name in right there. You have to understand that in as much as we don't have a name in this text, he said, you know what? You can plug Larry just right there. You can put Linda just right there. You can uh, put anybody's name right there. And the same thing I did for this certain woman, I'll do the same thing. For you. And I'll be honest with you right then and there. You should be in carriage and sitting on the edge of your seat because if the Lord blessed her and he's no respecter of person, that allows us to know he can do the same thing. That if he did it in the Old Testament, he can do it here in 2023. That in as much as he did not put a name on this woman, he's allowing us to know that just like I did it for her, I'll do it for you. Right here, we see that this woman uh, finds herself uh, going through financial troubles and uh, they are, the bondsmen, I mean, the creditors have come to take her two sons as bondsmen. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, I'm pretty sure if I was to ask any mother in this room, she would tell me, she said, you know, when the enemy tries me, you know, I don't like it, but I will deal with it. Uh, any mother in this room will tell you that when the enemy tries my husband, I don't like it, but I'll deal with it. He said, but when the enemy tries my babies, it, it right then and there, something has to change and something has to break. We have to understand that in this text right here, we see that her financial problems are not just something she has to deal with, but now it has trickled down to the next generation. Can I be honest with you? I just want someone to be fair tonight uh, and be willing to share with me how many parents in this room will say, you know, my children don't know how many times I had to struggle and make some things work. They they were able to live good. They were able to enjoy life. They don't know how I had to cut some corners, how I had to go without so that they could have every now and again. I denied myself that new outfit so I can make sure food was on the table for them. Can I just ask some parents here tonight? Have you ever found yourself? saying, you know what? God blessed me with these children, and so I'm willing to cut corners so that my children can have what I don't have. Ooh, I'm getting ready to get into some preaching, but I just got to pause for a moment. Because uh, so often in life, parents, we can tell uh, and say that we were willing to cut corners so that our children would have what we didn't have, but sometimes we forget to give them what we did have. 
Oh, y'all just missed it right there. Uh, sometimes we forget to tell them, yes, you need to be appreciative of the little creature comforts that you have. You, you need to be appreciative of the things that you have. You know what? You, when I was coming up, I didn't have the Jordans 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. I didn't have PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, and $100 games to go with it. I was lucky if I had some jacks, if I had a jump rope, if I had an old mason jar where I could catch the lightning bugs. You need to be appreciative of the things that you have. But, but then the text, but then the text, but then the text, it, 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 but once this woman realizes that she's in financial troubles, something takes place in the text. I want to show you what happened. Look there at verse number two. And Elijah says unto her, what shall I do for you? Tell me what do you have in the house? Let me pause right there. This is the best part of the sermon right here. I want to make sure you get it. Understand that this woman who is in financial troubles, who is going through financial struggles and cannot seem to make the ends meet, she did the right thing and she goes to the man of God. And she's explaining to him, she's saying, I don't have any money. My husband is dead. The creditors are coming to take my children. I don't know how I'm going to make it. But the man of God says, sister, tell me, what do you have in the house? Let me see if I can make it plain for you. I'm going to repeat it maybe once or twice because I got to make sure you get it. She goes uh, to the man of God. She tells him, I'm having financial troubles. The creditors have come. They're going to take my children. I don't have anything. But the man of God says, tell me, sister, what do you have in the house? Let me say it one more time, and I hope and pray that you get it. She goes to the man of God. She says, man of God, I'm going through some financial troubles. The creditors are calling. They're coming to take my children. I don't have anything in the house. Uh, but the man of God says, sister, tell me what you have in your house. All right, one more time, and I promise I'm done. She goes to the man of God. She tells the man of God. She says, I'm going through some financial struggles. The creditors are calling. They're coming to take my children. I don't have anything. And he says, what do you have in the house? The reason I share that with you is because the man of God wants us to be able to say this. God sometimes wants us to focus on what we do have and stop talking about what we don't have. Can I see if I can make it plain for you here tonight? You have to understand every now and again, you need to stop complaining about what you don't have. But you need to thank the Lord for what he has blessed you with. Because if you can pause for a moment and thank God for what he has blessed you with, I believe God will see that you're a good steward and he'll bless you with some more. Let me see if I can make it plain for you. You might not have steak in your house, but if you got crackers and waters, you still need to thank God. You might not have Cadillac or Lexus on the parking lot, but if you got a bus pass to get you from A to B, you need to be thankful for what God has done. You might not have silk uh, on your back, but as long as you got my two best girls, Polly and Esther, get it, Polly, Esther, if you got that to cover your back, everything will be all right. What you need to do is stop worrying about what you don't have and say, Lord, I just want to pause for a moment and thank you for what I do have. I thank you for the little rags I have. I thank you for the little house. I have. I thank you for the raggedy car I have. I thank you for the raggedy job I got. Because guess what? I have discovered that in these moments, you have to thank God for what you do have and stop worrying about what you don't have. I, I, you know, the next time, the next time you find yourself, you find yourself, you find yourself, you find yourself in a situation and you're saying, well, how am I going to make it? Just pause for a moment and start looking around and say, boy, this ain't new, but I, I got that. The Lord gave it to me. Uh, the, the, th this ain't brand new, but I got that right there, and it's still working. The Lord gave it to me. Uh, this this right here, it ain't brand new, but the Lord gave it to me. And I, uh, it, let, let me just share this with you. I'm going to tell you some personal stuff. Uh, the reason why I got that is because I have a great uncle. He's gone on to glory now, uh, but I have a great uncle, and uh, he was t he was tight. Oh my God, was he tight on a dollar! Uh, and, and in as much as he was tight on a dollar, he retired twice from two different careers. And whatever you would go him, he had 
Uh, he would have on this wood stove. I don't care what time of the year it was. It was just hot. Uh, he would just burn wood all year long. And he had this old box TV. This is the God's honest truth. And he had beside the TV a set of pliers. Y'all don't know nothing about that. Uh, and beside this box TV, he had pliers. And when you wanted to change the channel, you couldn't reach over and get no remote. You couldn't uh, reach over and decide what you wanted to watch on the cable channels. You had to get those old pliers and you had to stick the pliers uh, in the TV and you had to turn uh, channel. But oh, y'all don't know nothing about that. Y'all y'all fancy. But let me just tell you, uh, we used to say, Uncle Clint, why in the world do you have this old raggedy TV? Why don't you, you, we know you can afford a, a flat screen. We'll take you down to Best Buy. We'll let you pick it out. I'll even have somebody put it up for you. He says, no, I'm going to keep on watching this old raggedy TV with the antenna, the uh, coat hanger antenna, and then I got to change with my pliers. He said, because every now and again when I look at it, it reminds me of how far the Lord has brought me from. See, understand this, that in as much as you might see a raggedy TV, but when I was coming up, we had no TV at all. And because I can say, I thank the Lord for what he has done, then I don't need all of those fineries. And I came by here to share with you tonight that you need to understand that you don't have to have the latest of everything, but be thankful for what God has done. that he says, look, I don't want you to focus on what you don't have. I want you to focus on what you do have. But then he says something else. He says in the third verse, he says, go and borrow some jars, borrow some vessels. He says, go to your neighbor's house, even empty vessels. Borrow not a few. He says, having problems making the ends meet, sister. Went to the man of God, and the man of God said, what do you have in the house? Just told the preacher, I don't have anything in the house. And he says, well, since you don't have anything in the house, go borrow a vessel. Go, go, hold on, you, you, I'm confused. Y'all help me for a moment. I'm, I'm just trying to get through this thing uh, the best I know how. Uh, why, why would you tell this woman who is coming to you with financial problems to, to go and borrow some vessels. I mean, she didn't told you she's trying to make the ends meet and uh, that the creditors are coming because her children. And now you told her to go and borrow some vessels. Man of God, please explain yourself. Basically, the man of God is saying, look, I need for her to get prepared for the blessing even before the blessing comes. Let, let, let me, can I just be honest with you? Uh, let me share with you that if you are going to ask God to bless you, you need to get ready for the blessing even before the blessing shows up. Let, uh, let me see if I can encourage somebody today. And you might be sitting there saying, Lord, I, I want a new job. That, that's fine. You can have a new job, but you need to get the education first so that when the job becomes available, you're able to be a good steward over the job that he's sent you. Well, God, God, I, I want a new house. Well, that's fine. God can bless you, but maybe you need to work on your credit first uh, so that when God sends you the house and sends you the opportunity, you can be a good steward over what you have got. M maybe you're saying, God, I want a new husband. Well, let me share something with you. If you take care of the first four that you had, maybe that when uh, God does send you somebody, you'll know how to be a good steward over it. You need to be prepared for the blessing even before the blessing gets there. Can, can I encourage somebody tonight? I don't know who I'm talking to, but I want you to know that yes, God has it for you, but are you ready for what God has for you? You need to get ready first and say, Lord, then send me what I need. The problem is, the problem is, the problem is that so often in life we're asking God uh, to do things, but we're not ready to receive what God wants us to have. We, we haven't put ourselves in the proper pasture to be able to receive what God wants for you. And you're wondering why God is holding up your blessing. Yes, God has your blessing for you. You're just not ready for what God has for you. Oh, Lord, it's mighty quiet in here tonight. Okay, okay, let me keep going so that I can uh, uh, hurry up and get on about your hair. On a Thursday night. <laughs> then, then, then he says, he says something else too. He says, sister, go borrow vessels, but borrow not a few. Ooh, wait, 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 wait. So not only am I going to look like a fool gathering vessels, 
But then you want me to gather not a few vessels. I'm going to look like a fool gathering empty jars. But then you want me to gather a whole lot of empty jars. Preacher, you, you, you got to tell me, first, I don't understand why you want me to go get empty jars. But now you have to explain to me why you don't want me to get a small amount of empty jars. Can I see if I can make it plain for you tonight? The reason why God is saying don't get a small amount of jars is because he said if you want a small blessing, get prepared for a small blessing. But if you need something big in your life, you need to get prepared for the big blessing. Now, I need for you to understand that if you get a small amount, that means all you want is an average blessing. But let me ask somebody on a Thursday night, how many of you need a blessing from God and you don't need just an average blessing? You you need something big from God. You you need something exuberant from God. You, you need something esteemed from God. You, you need God to do a big thing in your life. Can I just share something else with you tonight? My grandmother used to say this to me all the time. She said, boy, I want you to know this, that God will be whatever you want him to be. If you want God to be a small God, he'll be a small God and he'll do some small things. But if you believe God to be a big God, he can do some big things in your life. Can I ask you something on a Thursday night? How many persons have ever trusted God to do a big thing and God has made a way out of no way. How many of us has ever trusted God to say, God, I need for you to open up some doors, and the doors I need you to open, I need to make sure that no man can shut those doors, and I need you to shut some doors that no man can open. God, I don't need a small blessing. I need a big blessing, and that's why I continue to lift my eyes to the hills from which cometh my help, knowing that my help does come from the Lord. I'm, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Now, 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 understand how the text unfolds. The text says that the woman gathered the jars. She went to her house, shut the doors, her and her sons had a prayer meeting, and it said, that the jar started to fill with oil. Y'all see it. I want you to see it. It's verse number six. And it came to pass that when the vessels were filled, we see that she has prepared for the blessing. And the blessing is coming. And now the jars are filled. And then it says that her and her sons were together. And she says, bring me another vessel. And he says, Mama, there ain't no more vessels. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. The oil represents the blessing. And the blessing was coming as long as she had space. But when she ran out of vessels, the oil stopped flowing. Oh, let me see if I can make it plain for you. Hold on. The blessing didn't stop flowing because there was no more blessing. The blessings stopped flowing because she didn't have no more room. Let me say it one more time because I'm about to jump out the room all by myself. Understand that the blessing didn't stop flowing, but she ran out of space. And because she ran out of space, the blessing stopped flowing. Let me say it one more time. I'm not repeating myself because I'm bored, but I need to make sure you get it that God didn't run out of blessing. We just ran out of space to receive the blessing that God had for us. Can I just tell you something? That as long as you are prepared for what God wants to do for you, he will not run out of blessing. My Bible tells me he got cattle upon hills. My, my Bible tells me he got riches and he'll give you his riches according to his glory in, in heaven. My, my Bible tells me that when he starts to bless, he'll open up the windows of heaven, that he will pour out blessings so much to the point that we can't receive them all. Let me share with you, the blessing didn't run out. She ran out of vessels. Mm. Uh, uh, may, may, maybe, just maybe, just maybe the reason why you haven't received your blessing is not because God has stopped doing what he needs to do. Maybe you stopped doing. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. But let me see if I can just give you one more point. Yeah, haven't y'all ever noticed black preachers will tell you they've done 20 times before they actually done? Well, this is the last time I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm done. I'm really done. But let me just give you one more, and I promise I'm done. If you look there at the seventh verse, and we can ready to get on up out of here, it says, Then she came and she told the man of God, 
he said, uh, he said, uh, man of God, here's the vessels. And he said to her, go and sell the oil and pay your debt and live you and your children off the rest. Let me, let me see if I can make this plain for you. And I promise I'm done here tonight. Understand that when she went to the man of God to start with, she had financial problems. And she said, I don't know how I'm going to make the ends meet. She goes to him and she tells him that she doesn't have uh, anything in the house. And we already have talked about how he told her to go and get some vessels. And she went back home. She shut the door, had a prayer meeting with her children. And God started blessing and the oil started to fill the vessels. And after she fills the vessels, she takes what she has. God has blessed her with. And she goes back to the man of God. And she says, man of God, she said, I did exactly as what you told me to do. She said, I, I gathered the vessels. I gathered the jars. And God blessed me such to the point that now I don't have any more vessels in the house. But here's where the blessing gets good tonight, and I promise I'm done. He says, okay, let me see what you got. So she lines up the jars in front of her, and he says, okay, take that portion right there and pay your debts, and take this portion over here and live off the rest. Now, now the reason why I say this is the best part of the sermon is because when she went to him, all she did was trying to get an answer for the problem she was in right then. But when she gave it to God, God not only answered the problem that she was in, but he also gave her some more along the way. Can I just say something with you? And I promise I'm done here tonight that you and I, we serve the God of more. He knows how to give you more than you can ever ask or ever think. We serve the God of more because he knows how to bless you with more than you can ever think that he can do with, for you. Let me just encourage somebody on tonight. I don't know where you are, but if you just give it to God, God will bless you. And not only will he bless you, he'll give you something for what you're in right now. And he'll give you something for along the way. Let me encourage somebody tonight that I know that my God, God can give you stuff that is pressed down, shaken together, and then running over. I would tell you that my God is so God that he knows how to bless you, even the presence of your enemies, that your cup now runs over. Let me share this with you before I go here tonight. Let me ask you, how many know that when God bless, not only will he bless you for the situation that you're in, but he will give you something for along the way. And so whenever you find yourself in a problem, you need to just give it to God and say, God, not only do I need you to bless me right now, but bless me tomorrow if you let me see it. Bless me next week if you let me see it. Bless me next month if you let me see it. Bless me next year if you let me see it. I don't want just a blessing for tonight. I don't want just a blessing for what I'm in, but I want to give everything that I have and give it to the master. And if I give it to the master, I know that you can work that thing out. Can I just preach it like I'm a black Baptist one time? Let me just share with you that I serve a God that can make a way out of no way. How many persons can wait at me tonight and tell me that you know that God can make a way out of no way. How many persons know tonight that God can open up some doors that no man can close, that God can close some doors that no man can open, that when you give your problem to God, not only will he bless you, but he'll give you something along the way. Take that sickness that you got, give it to the master, not only say bless me in the condition I'm in, but bless my entire body. I need more. Whenever you find yourself having financial problems, don't just give him August bill, but put September, October, and November in front of him and believe that he will give you more for along the way. Whenever your family is broken, say, Lord, not only do I need you to fix me, but fix everybody in my household. Fix everything I'm connected to. Fix my children and my children's children. Don't just bless me right now, but give me some more for along the way. Give me more. Give me more. The God I serve is the God of more. He's the God of extra. Extra love. Extra grace. Extra mercy. Extra kindness. Extra salvation. Extra redemption. Extra regeneration. The God I serve is the God of extra. So on tonight, as I said before, I don't know who I was preaching to. I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where it was hard to make the ends meet. I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where you say, I don't know what we're going to do. Give it to the master. Say, God, not only do I want you to fix what I'm in, but give me some extra along the way. Because if he did it for her, Lord have mercy, he'll do it. He'll do it for you.
on tonight, we're going to ask our choir to come back. Give us something real quick. I'm going to get myself together, and we're going to come back and open the doors of the church. Uh, and then we will be dismissed on tonight. Amen. And knowing Jesus, he will pick you up and turn your life around. Yes, to know him. Yes, to know him. Right now. Right now. Today, that's all. There's nothing better, nothing better than knowing Jesus. Knowing Jesus, it gets sweeter, it gets sweeter as the days go by. Oh, Get to know it. Get to know it. Just go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. So come on. Come on. Come on, 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 right now, today, let's go. Amen. Look, um, I asked your uh, your deacons, and because uh, I wanted to make sure that I was doing things right, and, and uh, they said, oh, Reverend, you can, you can just flow, amen. Uh, I don't know if they were saying that because this is the last night, and they're saying, hey, look, just do what you got to do because we don't have to deal with you no more after the night, amen. And I know that we are supposed to open the doors of the church, uh, but I want to do something a little different tonight because revival is a time for re-energizing the saints, it's for revitalizing the saints and refocusing the saints. And so I believe uh, that it is an honor and a privilege to be able to talk to God in prayer. Amen. Uh, and so on tonight, I want to end um, this with a prayer. Amen. We're going to pray together. We're going to uh, have a... Uh, congregational prayer. Uh, we're going to have a closing prayer and benediction all at one time. Amen. And so I'm going to ask that you will stand tonight uh, with me. We're going to stand and agree on tonight. Look, um, I need to make this request of you. Uh, maybe you know someone who stands in the need of prayer on tonight. You, you know someone who needs not only a regular blessing, but they need more along the way. <clears throat> What I'm going to ask of you tonight is I want you to raise up their name. Now, not their condition, not what they're going through. Reason being is for uh, time and confidentiality. Amen. But if you raise up their name, then I declare to you God already knows what they stand in need of. Uh, how many believe that on tonight? Uh, as we prepare to go to the Lord on uh, in prayer tonight, I'm definitely going to ask that you would continue to pray for my mother and also my mother-in-law. Amen. Uh, for those of you who know the power of prayer on tonight. Maybe you know someone who needs prayer. Let me, if you would, just give it to me. Amen. Help me out. You said Warren? Warren. Amen. Okay, we got you, sis. Anyone else tonight? Okay, y'all want to help me out? Dorothy Ross. Amen. Helen Waddy. Okay, sis. A little bit louder for me. Ann Wilson. Elton Wilkins, okay, I got you, amen. Sister, okay, you on your on our prayer list. Sister, Sheila James, amen. Sister, Jean Randolph, we got you. Brother, Joseph Pace, Joseph and Ethelene Pace, okay, got you. Sister, Alice Holmes, we got you. 
Mildred Wright, we got you. Deborah Perkins, we got you. Is there someone else? Sis, one usher. Brenda Brown and Brown families. Sis, one more time. Scott, family. Okay. Sis, Mary Logan, amen. Sarah Smith, we got you. Sis, Johnson family. Is there someone? Okay. Warren Bailey. Mealy, Mealy. Okay, Warren Mealy. Okay. Jenny Morris, I think I heard it. Sis, Jean Morris, I apologize. And look, if I mispronounce somebody's name, by all means, you know, uh, you know, I'm not as young as I used to be. Amen. Okay. Okay. God got it all. Amen. <laughs> God, God got it all. Got them all. Okay. Robert Furbish and the Graves family. Okay. Someone else next? I'm sorry, sis. Okay, Herman Price and Annette Dickerson, did you say? Herman? Herman, Herman Price, okay. okay. I Carol forgot. Lawson. Carol Lawson, I'm sorry. Jones family. Jones and Walker family. Sis, Reverend. Price family, amen. Reverend. Eddie Pace, we got you. Please, thank you. Uh, thank you, brother. Owens family. Amen. Pastor Tal West, West Tolliver's family. Yeah. Amen. West Tolliver's family. Amen. Also, too, uh, I, I have not said it since I've been here. Um, I, uh, your, your, your former pastor before West uh, was a friend of ours as well, uh, Walter Jones. Amen. And so I know he could stand in our need of our prayers. Amen. So let's not forget Walter Jones on tonight. Deacon. Mabel. Timberlake. Okay. I got you. Sis. Lois Hamilton. Look, let me say this tonight, too. Somebody is probably saying, because I can see it in the spirit. Man, that's taking forever. But let me say this to you. If you ever needed prayer, you, you don't mind pausing. Amen. I, I Look, you, you know, if, you, if you've if you ever been in a situation where you needed God to hear you, amen. Look, time means nothing. Amen. Time means nothing. Uh, anyone else tonight? Anyone? Okay. Okay. Got you. Sis. Raglan family. We got you. Sis. Christ family. We got you. Ellis family. We got you. Hughes, okay, sis, Hembry uh, and, and Marlow family, amen, Holmes family, Hayden, Hayden family, we got you, Feeney family, okay, Gordon Price, this is not the same Price, it's different Price, okay, okay, all right, cousins, okay, all right, that's what happens when you're in a family church, amen. So, look, we're just going to put the whole Price family on our <laughs> prayers. Huh? Let's, just, let's just get all the Prices in there. Amen. Betts family. Amen. Betts family. Anyone else? Buford. Okay. Okay, man. We're praying for your brother. Uh, Brother-in-law. Okay. Bryce family and Willis. Sure. Sure, Willis has got you. Amen. Let, okay. Brown family. We got you. All right. County Line Baptist Church, amen. I think I got it, amen. Brother, Pace family, we got you. Anyone? All right, let's 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 go to the Lord. Shirley Bruce, okay. Shirley Bruce, Bruce. Waddy family, we got you, brother. Okay, all right. Minor family. Look, let me also say this to you: if I miss anybody tonight, please, by all means, don't don't take it as anything slight against you. Even in your silent prayer, God hears you. Okay, God hears you. Okay. Look, let's let's pray tonight. Let's pray tonight. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. If thou would withdraw thyself from me, then tell me where, where could I go? Tonight, here we are, O oh Lord. Humbled heart, bowed head, and submissive spirit. Lord, we come to you tonight because the truth of the matter is we have no other place we can go. We've tried so many other things. We put our faith in man only for man to let us down. We put our faith in our job only to have our supervisor come in the room and tell us that they're sending our job across seas. We put our faith in our little piece of money that we've accumulated in the bank only to recognize it only takes one bout of sickness to wipe that account out. Lord, we 
put our faith in our connection, our social connection, only to recognize that they can't save us, put us in heaven, or kick us out. And so, Lord, we come on tonight because you are the answer to any question that we have. But, Lord, we have manners. We've been taught manners. We, we know how to, to approach you. And so, Lord, before we ask for anything on tonight, we thank you for all that you have done. We thank you that you gave us the wherewithal to be able to look to the hill from which cometh our help, knowing that our help does come, does come from the Lord. We thank you on tonight that we have enough sense to turn our face to Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, you've heard the prayers and the concerns of your people. You've heard the sacred supplication and the pious petition. And so, Lord, on tonight, there's sickness in the family. But, Lord, just as Grandma used to say, we in and know as much as we go through sickness, we know there's a doctor above all doctors who's never lost a patient. Lord, there might be someone tonight who has to go and stand before the judge. Or there might be someone who has a family member who has to stand before the judge. As granddaddy would say, we know a man who's a lawyer <laughs> in the courtroom. Lord, on tonight, there might be someone who is broken in their family. We pray that you would reinstitute Jesus Christ being the foundation of the family. Lord, we have to understand that the family is so important. The reason the family is important is because you formed the family even before you formed the church. In the Garden of Eden, you put Adam and Eve together. You gave them instructions on how to be parents, to multiply, to be fruitful. And so, Lord, we see how important the family structure is to you. And so on tonight, we ask that you would teach husbands to love wives again. That you would teach wives to love and respect husbands again. That you would teach children that uh, respect is so important again. That Jesus Christ would not be something we just do on Sunday, but it would be something we do every day. That the Lord would continue to lead and guide us along the way. Lord, not only do we pray for families on tonight, Lord, you heard the sermon. We pray for people's finances on tonight. Lord, we know that there might be some who is saying, how am I going to make it? But just remind them, if you took care of them in July, and you took care of them in June, and you took care of them in May, and you took care of them in April, and you took care of them in March, you took care of them in February, you took care of them in January, you took care of them in 2022, you took care of them in 21. You took care of them in 20. You brought us through the pandemic. Lord, you're still able to take care of us now. Lord, not only do we place our financial situation before you, but Lord, there might be someone who's struggling in their faith journey today, whose faith is shaken because, oh Lord, you did not answer the prayer they wanted you to answer or the way they wanted you to answer. But Lord, teach us and remind us that it's not always about getting our way, but having the way and will of God manifested in our lives. Lord, I pause tonight and lift up every church that's open in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, the church is going through a great transition right now. Lord, we thought that we had a handle on this COVID thing. Now it's coming back around one more time. Lord, we, there's people that we haven't seen since the last pandemic. And now here we are at the cusp, getting ready to have to deal with something global again. But Lord, just like you took care of us before, just like you took care of the church before, yes, we're in a period of transition, but remind every church that the goal is still the same. That's to lift up the bloodstained banner, to continue to tell men, women, boys, and girls that Jesus Christ is still the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, we're thankful. We're thankful for ministry. And now here we are, not only having service on site, but now we have it online. Meaning that the ministry of Jesus Christ is not stuck right here on this road, but it can go worldwide now. And so, Lord, teach us to be able to embrace that which you are doing that is brand new. That even though our model and methodology has changed, Jesus Christ is still the same. Yesterday and forever. 
Lord, we pray for the County Line Baptist Church. As they are in a transitional period, we pray that you would send the person you would have for them that would take them to new heights, that would take them to new levels, but all the while continuing to show them that Jesus Christ is still the way. Lord, teach them and remind them that they don't have to go and look for anybody because if they look for something, that's exactly what they'll get, just something. But Lord, if they give it to you and say, Lord, send us what you would have for us, then you already are preparing the next leader for this church. Lord, if I might be stingy just for a moment tonight, Lord, don't stop here in Kent Store in Goochland, but travel on up 95 to the corners of 16th and Newton. There's a church called Canaan there. We ask that you would bless Canaan. And we're thankful tonight that the same God we worship in the nation's capital is the same God they worship here in Gooseland County. Lord, continue to bless each and every church that is open in your name. And Lord, on tonight, maybe someone didn't call a name. Maybe they did not raise up a concern. But you know what they're going through. You know their silent prayer. And so, Lord, we ask that you would bless us even in our silent moments, in those moments we're up at 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning trying to find an answer, remind us that Jesus Christ is still the way. Lord, as we prepare to close this worship service, we pray that you've been pleased with everything. We pray that you was pleased with the songs of Zion. We pray that you was pleased with the prayers of the faithful. We pray that you was pleased with the fellowship of the saints. I personally pray that you was pleased with the preaching. But Lord, if you are pleased, that means there's a devil in hell that is upset. And his job remains to be the same. And that's to steal, kill, and destroy. And so, Lord, we ask that you put up a hedge of protection around us. Bless each and every house that's represented here tonight. And if it be your will, we ask that you point our feet and our face back to our respective places of worship. So we can worship you all over again in spirit and in truth. Blessed be the ties that bind us together. Now unto him who's able to keep all of us from falling. And present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. I declare power will be his now henceforth and forevermore. And all of God's people, the ones that love him, said amen and amen. God bless you, County Line.